All right, day two. This is a scene from Good Will Hunting by Gus Van Sant. Uh, this scene has always been uh, one that has stuck in my memory, and I felt like this would be a great opportunity to break it down. So we're going to break it down in terms of writing, filming, and editing, and we're going to start with the writing. So if you remember our first video, you remember how I break down the writing. Typically what I do is I like to identify the conflict first, and I ask myself, what does the character want, why can't they have it, and why is that important? Then I graph the tension throughout the scene. And then the third thing I do is I ask myself, what do the character's actions reveal to me about the character? Oh, you know, I read your book last night. Oh, so you're the one. <laughs> do, you still, uh, do you still counsel veterans? No, I don't. Why not? Well, I gave it up when my wife got sick. You ever wonder what your life would be like if you, uh, if you never met your wife? What? Wonder if I'd be better off without her? No, 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 I'm not saying, like, no. better off. I didn't mean it, like... It's all right. You know. It's an important question. Because you'll have bad times, but that'll always wake you up to the good stuff you weren't paying attention to. And you don't regret meeting your wife? Why? Because the pain I feel now? Oh, well, I got regrets, Will, but I don't regret a single day I spent with her. So when did you know, like, that she was the one for you? October 21st, 1975. Jesus Christ, you know the fucking day? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it was game six of the World Series. Biggest game in Red Sox history? Yeah, sure. My friends and I had you know, slept out on the sidewalk all night to get tickets. You got tickets? Yep. Day of the game. We're sitting in a bar waiting for the game to start. And in walks this girl. It was an amazing game, though. You know, bottom of the eighth, Carbo tied it up at 6-6. It went to 12. Bottom of the 12th, in stepped Carlton Fisk. Old Pudge. Steps up to the plate. You know, he's got that weird stand. Yeah, yeah. And then, boom! He clocks it, you know. High, fly ball on the left field line. 35,000 people on their feet, yelling at the ball. But that's not because Fisk, he's waving at the ball like a madman. Yeah, get over! Get over! Get over! And then it hits a foul pole. Oh, he goes apeshit, and 35,000 fans, you know, they charge the field, you know? Yeah, and he's fucking pulling oh, no, up. He's like, fucking pulling, get on the... Get out of the way! Get out of the way! I can't fucking believe you had tickets in that fucking game! Yeah. Did you rush the field? Uh, no, I didn't rush the fucking field. I wasn't there. What? No, I was in a bar having a drink with my future wife. You missed Pudge Fist's home run? Oh, yeah. To have a fucking drink with some lady you never met? Yeah, but you should have seen her. She was a stunner. I don't care if Oh, fucking... no, no, she lit up the room. I don't Ooh. care if Helena Troy walks oh, into the Helena room. That's Troy. game six. No, oh, my was... God, and who are these fucking friends of yours? They let you get away with that? Uh, they had to. Wait, what, what did you say to them? I just slid my ticket across the table, and I said, sorry, guys, I got to see about a girl. <laughs> I gotta go see about a girl? Yeah. That's what you said? I had... And they let you get away with that? Oh, yeah, they saw in my eyes that I meant it. You're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding you, Will. That's why I'm not talking right now about some girl I saw at about 20 years ago and how I always regretted not going over and talking to her. I don't regret the 18 years I was married to Nancy. I don't regret the six years I had to give up counseling when she got sick. And I don't regret the last years when she got really sick. And I sure as hell don't regret missing a damn game. That's regret. Wow. Would have been nice to catch that game, though. I didn't know Pudge was going to hit a home run. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, the filming process. So when I'm analyzing the filming, I'm asking myself, what is the theme of the scene? How do the actions support the theme? And then thirdly, how does the director and the cast and the crew go about cinematically capturing those actions? So this takes into account the psychology of the composition of the shot, the camera movement, all of those things, including color theory. Oh, you know, I read your book last night. Oh, so you're the one. <laughs> do, you still, uh, do you still counsel veterans? No, I don't. Why not? Well, I gave it up when my wife got sick. You ever wonder what your life would be like if you... Uh... If you never met your wife? I wonder if I'd be better off without her. No, 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 I'm not saying, like, no. better off. I didn't mean it. Like, it's all right. You know. It's an important question. Because you'll have bad times, but that'll always wake you up to the good stuff you weren't paying attention to. And you don't regret meeting your wife? Why? Because the pain I feel now? Oh, I got regrets, Will, but I don't regret a single day I spent with her.
So when did you know, like, that she was the one for you? October 21st, 1975. Jesus Christ, you know the fucking day? Oh, yeah. Because it was game six of the World Series. Biggest game in Red Sox history? Yeah, sure. My friends and I had you know, slept out on the sidewalk all night to get tickets. You got tickets? Yep. Day of the game. We're sitting in a bar waiting for the game to start. And in walks this girl. It was an amazing game, though. You know, bottom of the eighth, Carbo tied it up at the 6-6. It went to 12. Bottom of the 12th, in stepped Carlton Fisk. Old Pudge. Steps up to the plate. You know, he's got that weird stand. Yeah, yeah. And then, boom! He clocks it, you know. High, fly ball on the left field line. 35,000 people on their feet, yelling at the ball. But that's not because Fisk, he's waving at the ball like a madman. Yeah, get over! Get over! Get over! And then it hits a foul pole. Oh, he goes apeshit, and 35,000 fans, you know, they charge the field, you know? Yeah, and he's fucking pulling oh, no, he's like, fucking get, get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way. I can't fucking f- believe you had tickets in that fucking game. Yeah. Did you rush the field? Uh, no, I didn't rush the fucking field. I wasn't there. What? No, I was in a bar having a drink with my future wife. You missed Pudge Fist's home run? Oh, yeah. To have a fucking drink with some lady you never met? Yeah, but you should have seen her. She was a stunner. I don't care if Oh, fucking... no, no, she lit up the room. I don't Ooh. care if Helena Troy walks oh, into the Helena room. That's Troy. game six. No, oh, my was... God, and who are these fucking friends of yours? They let you get away with that? Uh, they had to. Wait, what, what did you say to them? I just slid my ticket across the table, and I said, sorry, guys, I got to see about a girl. <laughs> I gotta go see about a girl? Yeah. That's what you said? I had And they let you get away with that? Oh, yeah, they saw in my eyes that I meant it. You're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding you, Will. That's why I'm not talking right now about some girl I saw at about 20 years ago and how I always regretted not going over and talking to her. I don't regret the 18 years I was married to Nancy. I don't regret the six years I had to give up counseling when she got sick. And I don't regret the last years when she got really sick. And I sure as hell don't regret missing a damn game. That's regret. Wow. Would have been nice to catch that game, though. I didn't know Pudge was going to hit a home run. (laughs) (laughs) And last but not least, editing, in which I use Walter Murch's checklist and also Pudovkin's checklist. Now, in the previous episode, there were no examples of Pudovkin's five editing techniques. But in this scene, there is. Let's see if you can spot which one it is. This is the opening shot, and what I love about this shot is that it gives us the entire layout of the room. And this is sort of like what they consider uh, God's POV, right? The, the bird's eye view. And this is going to come back into play later because the, we have uh, these chairs lined up in such a way on this rug so that it, it mimics uh, a baseball diamond. And that's going to come back later on in the uh, edit with the parallelism. So let's go ahead and go through this. Also notice real quick here that uh, (laughs) Matt Damon's foot is on the table. All right, next shot. All right, this is the first shot down here on this level. Um, Typically what you wanna look for is the gap between two people that will indicate whether or not they are um, seeing eye to eye, so to speak, if they're you know on the same page. Now, uh, this gap is going to close a great deal as this scene progresses. Right now, this is a this is a fairly defensive body structure, uh, body posture that um, uh, Sean's character is portraying, and it's uh, structurally sound in the sense that like he's guarded, he's guarded off in all these different avenues, but he's going to open up. In, uh, very shortly here. Also, if we take a look at the background, we can see all these different experiences and concepts that are adding to who he is as a person. We've got, um, you know, this word here in the background, dying, because that's part of his background. He, he understands what it's like to hold somebody in your arms as they're dying. Um, all these different little bits and pieces of the American flag. Um, it's actually... Uh, pointing in the wrong direction here, but that's um, can be interpreted differently as well. Um, so yeah, all this body of information that's behind Sean's characters is interesting. All right, so now we can see that uh, this is the first single shot, or not a single shot, it's an over-the-shoulder shot that we have of um, Will's character. Notice that his foot has magically jumped from the table onto this chair. 
find that fascinating. Um, but again, Walter Murch's rules dictate that that is not nearly as important as the uh, emotion that is going between these two. So we stick with the emotion. Now, what, uh, what does the background tell us about Matt, about, uh, excuse me, about Will's character? Well, we know that he's intelligent. We've got this vast knowledge that's behind him as well. Um, okay, so let's keep going with the next shot. Again, um, there. This is this is a very interesting angle. So the angle here that's chosen is interesting because it's so close behind the shoulder of Sean's character that it almost feels as though Will's character is speaking to us, the audience, directly. This is a reverse shot, the same shot that we've covered already. So this right here is the punched-in version of um, Will's response as he tries to uh, indicate that he it was not trying to offend Sean's character. And so we, we punch in a little bit on a different lens, um, probably an 85, maybe a 50, um, uh, depending on the distance away from, from Will. But yeah, just to sort of elevate the... Uh, the intensity between them and we have the response so again this is the the equal response to will's question so equally punched in we've we've elevated the scene this is the first time he gives his rebuttal and we can see here that um that will in his response he doesn't accept this he doesn't accept this first answer it doesn't doesn't ring true to him um or it might ring true but he's but it's he's having a hard time receiving it so this is the reverse shot on, on sean's character and this is the second time that he answers will's question which again will not be received and this is the reverse shot same shot that we saw earlier and this is will indicating to sean's character that uh, it's not getting through to him so Sean has to mix it up. And this is where Sean's going to mix it up. He starts to bring in baseball and he starts to bring in numbers. And now he's relating to Will on a very equal footing because this is Will's world. Will, Will is all about numbers and baseball because baseball is very much a numbers game. And so he, he comes to him uh, on his lean, on his um, natural inclination. And Will all of a sudden opens up. This is, this is him responding entirely differently. He shifts his body. Um, he, he turns towards uh, Sean's character. He opens up um, from a body posture perspective. And all of a sudden we can see, oh, now his posture, his, he had a figure four cross leg over the front of his, him here. And now he's opened up his body towards Will. And that is... Um, that's an indicator that now they're being more open. Or he's being much more open with, with Will in a, in a sense that Will's processing it or he's about to process it. This is interesting back here, this uh, rat in a cage, um, because this is 100% th thought through. This is not um, unintentional by any means. So I'll leave you to uh, interpret what that might possibly mean. Uh, and if you're curious, uh, Will actually mentions it later on when he's talking to his friend Chucky at the construction site. Okay, so now we go into the parallelism that you're going to see in the editing process. Um, this is uh, Pudovkin's parallelism editing technique where we cut back and forth to uh, another, another event to sort of um, draw correlation between the two and now we can see oh will is really getting engaged in this because this is this is his this is his world this is what he enjoys he he's all about baseball and numbers and now what sean has quote unquote set the hook like he he's got his attention he's he's now able to open up a channel to to pass information over to will taking the mound there's actually a cut right after this that's really fascinating it's um it's cutting on the pitch 
uh, I, I forgot to put in that last shot, but the, in this documentary footage of, you know, parallelism, there's this shot of him taking the mound and then also pitching the ball and it cuts on the ball being, uh, landing into the mitt. Um, cause this is what's happening right now is Will threw him two pitches and he struck out twice. He wasn't able to get the idea across twice. And now this is the third pitch where Will has asked him a third time, you know, how do you live? How do you be a, how, what does it take to be a man? Um, how do you avoid regret? And, and this is, this is Sean's third at bat, so to speak, or his third, um, yeah, this is his third attempt at this at bat. So he's, he's not just conveying information to Will on a purely informational level. Like, um, there's a, there's a combination of the logical and the, and the combination of the, um, of the emotional, so the pathos and the ethos, right? So he's he is like a good lawyer. He is conveying his argument in both ways. He's got uh, strong parts ethos, strong parts pathos, and Will is responding. And this is interesting. So they show uh, Pudge uh, coming up to the plate, and we see his his ratio. We can see that if you were to look, to look at his ratio overall, he has um, less hits overall than uh, the attempts. Obviously, he's he's not he doesn't have a per perfect record by any means. But that's not the point. Having a perfect record is not the agenda. The agenda is what happens uh, when you when you go for it. So now Sean's character really really opens up to Will, and he's going through the motions. He's he's drawing Will into his story. The pitch, and then we see the parallelism between Sean's character and Pudge. He went for it, and it hits. It's just on the edge. It's just on the line. It's you know just walking the line between failure and victory. Cele starts and uh, Sean starts to talk about the celebration, and Will starts to get get into it. The vi like to visualize what it, what it means to be victorious, right? Because that's it's so important to understand for Will. For Will's character, what does the what does the end game look like if you're victorious? Because then you can work your way backwards from there. Well, here I forgot to mention here that um, we're shooting at an upward angle here. Uh, whenever when Sean stands up, which is earlier here, so this is when Sean is standing up. This is this is where the influence is really taking place. This is their power dynamic now. Sean has the stage. He's 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 saying, "Hey, listen, I've got all of this experience, and I'm trying to share it with you so that you can live your life in such a way that you don't have regret when you grow up." And so again, we're shooting upward at Sean to show his his elevated um, his basically this is a, a level of his knowledge. He has these experiences. He's trying to share them with Will. And eventually, Will is starting to process it. He's starting to get on Sean's level. And this might be a little bit of a stretch, but I'm going to go ahead and say that this right here, this light in the background, if I were to be the set designer in this, I would argue that this right here is an indicator of his brilliance. Will is a brilliant person, but... He doesn't have much of a lampshade. His 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 light is is bright and less contained. And his so here he is. He's on a on a level field with Sean, and he's he's into it. He's he's receiving what Sean's putting out. And here's the victorious moment. The victory. And here behind Sean, we have this light with a lampshade around it, which is controlled light it's like the dis the difference between um 
an atomic bomb and a laser, you know, like what, what's, what's controlled and what's, what's not harnessed. And so Sean is celebrating. We have the parallelism again and everybody is, everybody is wrapped up in this victory at the same time because everybody wants to celebrate. Uh, it's, it's, this dynamic between the observers and the participants on the field it's um there's there's a really fascinating theory which is called the ob observers and it's it talks about um well eric weinstein recently talked about it about um geometrical geometric unity and he talks about the field the audience members and the players on the field and how um, there's a universe with more dimensions and what we perceive is basically what's happening on the field. And so that's an interesting interplay here. Now, do I think they took that into consideration when they wrote this bit? Probably not, but I think it's something very fascinating to consider if that is indeed how our universe is made up. Because it's, uh, it's something that everybody can participate in. And so Will's really getting excited about Sean's demonstration now. And he's like, oh, yeah, I do remember that. I do remember when Pudge Fisk ran around the bases and he was bowling people out of the way. So here we go back to this overhead shot, this bird's eye view. And I love this because it shows that um, we we saw this in the, in the very first opening shot. And now it's a callback to it. And... Um, if you have any, ever any, any recollection of baseball, Will is at third base. And so in order to get to Will, Sean has to make a home run. He has to really go around all the bases in order to make this land. And so um, here, it, it, it wouldn't be as powerful in my opinion because Will could have very easily have stood up and then just, and just been right here at second base. And that's all fine and good, but... I think it's actually quite important that Will was over here at third base because the only way to get through third base is for Sean to hit a home run, is for him to get to home and, and make that impact on Will. And then this is more parallelism with Pudge Fisk bowling people out of the way. The celebration. And now that they're on even footing and he's made this impact, he's appealed to both, um, he's appealed largely to um, Will's ethos and pathos. He's about to explain to him what he was trying to say earlier. And so now Will is very large in frame here. And here's Sean making his plea. And we can see that we're punching in here with a different lens, probably an 85, to indicate that Will doesn't, Will's view, uh, his worldview doesn't compute with what Sean just said. So this is the root of the problem, is that Will's so caught up in the immediate, uh, the the fanciful play of uh, you know the the ball game that he's going to miss out on the real joys of life. So this is the reverse shot. And we can see that we've pulled back a little bit. We've gone on a little bit of a wider lens here. And in this shot, this is where Sean's character is trying to explain in not so many words to Will's character, the, the need for discernment and, and wisdom is really discernment in action to be able to understand what is valuable and to go for it and this is will we punch in on will again probably on the 85 him talking about pudge fisk home run and how he really he can't believe that he missed out on that and here we can see this this uh, uncontrolled bright light beaming behind will and we go back to the controlled light lamp behind sean explaining no no you don't get it you're not seeing what i saw um you you don't have the discernment yet and i'm trying to get across to you 
I understand how much you value these things. But what I'm telling you is that there's something even more valuable out there that you're missing out on. <laughs> and I love this shot. This is so they pull back into a wide. This is behind the couch that would represent second base. So it's a pretty good view of the entire uh, room. And you can see that this is a very this is a very oppositional shot, meaning that Will is on one side um, and Sean is on the other side, and they are, are clearly uh, there are two two powers at, at odds with one another here, right? Will trying to advocate for you know, missing the ball game and, and Sean trying to advocate for there are more important things in life than that. This is a great little shot. Um, I, I think it's very interesting that um, behind Will, there is this notion of this lit up clock. And when Sean was originally sitting down earlier in the scene, there was also a tiny little clock behind him. Now, typically in... Um, in, a, in therapy sessions, typically it's, you don't see clocks, which is interesting, but there's clocks everywhere in this room. This is, uh, this is Will indicating to Sean that he can't believe that he missed out on it. He blames his friends, and Sean says, nope, it wasn't my friend's problem. It was, it was a decision that I made. And so uh, here Sean's indicating to Will that you know it was, it was a decision that he made, and it was up to him. And he explains how he did it. And, and Will <laughs> responds by thinking that the way he did it was ridiculous. And this right here is the reverse shot. And we've punched in on the 85. And this is such an important part that we've punched in on the 85 so that the audience picks up on it. And the audience is almost directly behind Will. So it's really as if Sean's character is appealing to us, the audience. And he's speaking to Will in his language and he gives him numbers. He gives him concrete numbers because he remembers every single month, every single year that was spent, um, you know, trying to be by his wife's side. And now we can see that this is beginning to land on Will. This is the 85 millimeter on Will. And, and we can see that it's finally getting through. It took all that time. It took that entire story. It took going around every single base for it to finally get to into Will's mind. And now this is the reverse on Sean explaining what regret really is. And we can see that it's finally made an impact on Will. This is one of the shots that really stood out to me and I didn't see it until I had to do this breakdown. But what happens here, Sean moves from second base essentially to first base. And the camera is on tracks here, and it's going to slightly pan as uh, Sean takes his seat. So we move, we track left and pan right. This exact camera movement is mimicked in the reverse shot as Will goes to sit down on the chair that would constitute third base. Um, the camera tracks left and slightly pans right as Will takes his seat. And this is to indicate that Will is following Sean. He's understanding what Sean is saying, and he's finally processing it. And now we can see that Sean and Will are opened up to each other, and that Sean has succeeded in elevating Will ever so slightly. Now, what's interesting about story structure is that right after this, after Will has been given this information, he needs to be tested in order to see whether or not he's, it's really solidified in him. Now, this scene is, I think the reason why this scene landed so strong for me was because at the very end of the film, there is a follow-up to it. There's a callback. And so I think leaving us with that at the very end of the film always leaves in our mind, where did that callback come from? Well, it came from this scene. And so even though Will fails in the following scene to uphold what he learned in this scene, he still takes what he learned from this scene, makes the adjustment, and then succeeds at the final chapter.
So that is it for the breakdown of this scene. And for me, this scene is one of those scenes that always stuck out in my memory as powerful. And so this practice of breaking it down was really helpful for me in figuring out why it was so effective. And I hope it was uh, beneficial for you as well. The reason why I use these sort of checklists is because I come from a, a very structured sort of medical background. And this helps me to sort of keep my, th my thoughts categorized so that I can lead with emotion. And if you look at Walter Murch's uh, checklist, the number one thing on that priority list is emotion. So it's very important to shoot from instinct, shoot from the gut, lead with emotion because ultimately that's what's going to impact your audience. So I hope that makes sense. Please don't get caught off guard by all these lists and think that we're, we're shooting something in a very sort of like sterile cookie cutter way because that's definitely not the case it's just about like a musician in order to allow themselves to improvise in the moment and be truly free they have to learn their scales they have to, they have to know the fundamentals before they can sort of elaborate and move you know in new pioneering ways and so that's kind of what i'm hopefully emphasizing to you guys um, anyway thank you so much for checking in um, this has been a really helpful practice for me. I hope it's been beneficial for you. Please do send in your recommendations for the next scene breakdown because I, I think we're going to be doing this for a while and it's a great way for us to stay sharp and stay focused. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and I look forward to hearing all your feedback.